In my previous video, I explained what an IPMI port on a server motherboard is and what it does. And a couple of you asked me if I could provide some examples. So I decided I'll make this video in which we'll take this empty system and turn it in a, into a fully functional router. So let's do it. Before we start, I have a small disclaimer to make. I had a nose surgery a couple of days ago, so if there's anything off about my <laughs> looks or voice, I apologize. Uh, on the flip side, I do have plenty of spare time so I could make this video. Uh, so there's that. So for the system that we'll use, we'll use the motherboard that I introduced in my previous video. The link should be somewhere here or here. I don't know <laughs> which side. Um, yeah, it's a Supermicro X11 SCL minus IF. Uh, the CPU on it is Core i3-9100F. So that's Coffee Lake 9th gen core processor. And I haven't received the final <laughs> memory yet. So basically I just pulled one of the sticks from my uh, gaming rigs here and yeah, it'll do the job. And as for the NVMe SSD, I have a 250 gig uh, crucial SSD. The device which I'll use to control all of this is my iPad and I will not <laughs> use it to the fullest. In fact, I only need the browser and that's pretty much it. The system is shut down, but I can already access the IPMI interface through the IP. So I'll do it now. So on your land IPMI landing page, usually what you can see is the monitor output, but we don't have that yet because as you can see, the host is currently turned off. So let's turn it on and you'll see the fan will start spinning. However, I will unplug that fan because we won't put much load on this system and I just want you to hear and see what the fan does at the very beginning. So let's turn it on. With the system turned on, I can now click the screenshot and it will open a new tab which will show me what the server itself or the monitor, if it was plugged in, would look like. Because iPad doesn't have an F2 or delete button for that matter, uh, this all these IPMI or virtual, virtual screens also come with virtual keyboards. There we go, we're in BIOS now, but if we scroll or arrow key our way over to the boot sequences, uh, there are no USB boot drives because there is none plugged in. And we will keep it that way because I've actually prepared an ISO image on my NAS which we will mount through the IPMI port as a virtual USB device. So now we'll go back to our virtual media on the Supermicro IPMI page, uh, click on CD-ROM and then you will see here I already preset all the necessary uh, settings and now what I have to do is just mount the CD-ROM, the virtual one, you heard the beep, that means it was mounted. So what I'll do now is I'll literally save and exit and just reboot the machine. By the way, server motherboard usually take longer or significantly longer to boot than their non-server counterparts because they have to perform extensive checks on all the let's call it subsystems uh, which mostly can be disabled in BIOS but you usually want to keep them in place. Now before we continue what I'll do I'll actually just unplug this fan so we get better audio from this video. And yeah don't worry we're fine uh, we won't stress this system too much so i think we can just use the heatsink and not the uh, not the fan so now you can see here we've got another virtual cd-rom atten virtual cd-rom ysoj and this is the one that is basically virtually mounted from my nas and behaves as a usb device on this system so let's run what's on it Okay, since this motherboard or this device is gonna become a full-fledged router based on OpenSense, 
it wants to know what my ports will be and I know that the IGB0 in this case is the lower one. I want that to be the LAN port and I want to be the upper one IGB1 to be the WAN port. So when it asks me for the WAN interface I'll put IGB1 in. There we go. That means we're done, but not quite. Uh, so what the beep does, it means that the system is up and running. However, we didn't install anything. We're running what is known a live image. So it basically runs it off the fake USB that we just mounted off memory, so to speak. So what we need to do now is actually install the OpenSense on our NVMe hard drive that we have on the system. So, let's do that now. Okay. The system is now installed and now I have to change the root password which I'll set to something <laughs> transparent. Remember, once we're done shooting all the videos of this series in which we'll basically build a full custom plug and play router, a high end at that, I will give this router away to one of the subscribers of the channel. So yeah, make sure you subscribe. Anyway, back to the password. Super secret password and an exclamation mark. Super secret password and an exclamation part. Mark. <laughs> okay, let's exit and reboot. There we go. Now all we need to do is set the boot priority to our hard drive, which I already think it's done, but let's just make sure no actually it's not it's the virtual cd-rom so what i'll do now is i'll use our hard drive as the number one hard uh, boot priority and save and exit yes and now what we should see is the system boot off our hard drive into our open sense uh, operating system I won't press any buttons now because I don't want to go into BIOS. In fact, I want it to work as it would by default, uh, meaning it should enter OpenSense automatically. There we go. OpenSense is now up and running on the hard drive, which means I can also go back into the IPMI and actually unmount the virtual USB drive which I'll do off camera, it's not a big deal. So that's pretty much it. Now we have a fully functional OpenSense based router, well, <laughs> the hardware at least. It's still missing the box. However, uh, I've got my slot at the CNC milling machine this week, so we will be recording a terrain uh, video, if you will, in which we'll basically take a block of aluminum and make a beautiful case out of it. There's more than just one video remaining because we also have to treat that case. We have to order some screws, some foams. You'll see how it all kind of gets together into a beautiful, well, I hope it will be a beautiful router. So make sure you're subscribed, like this video if you learned anything new and I'll see you in the next one.